Hey everybody, hey, uh, welcome to the Godbold Unlimited Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Godbold, and we're super excited for you to join us today. If you are uh, first time watching this uh, episode or this channel, uh, I am Lee Godbold again. I've started three businesses, three small little businesses over about the past 10 years been building up. One is uh, Junk Doctors Junk Removal and Hauling in North Carolina. It's a junk removal and demolition company. The uh, second is Junk Removal Authority, which is a consulting training and marketing company for the junk removal industry. So we're helping others throughout the country do what we did in North Carolina with our junk doctor's business. And then we have Specialty Truck Bodies, which is a manufacturing company that produces the junk removal bodies that companies throughout the country use to remove junk and haul debris. The reason we do this podcast is because over these last 10 years, there's been a ton of mistakes and some things we've done right to help us get to this point. The hope is, is that you're going to be able to take that information as we talk about it and skip some of those mistakes we've made and take advantage of some of those successes that we found. The other hope is, is that as we go along this journey to build our businesses from revenues of what are currently $5 million a year up to what we're going after, which is $10 million next year and then beyond even more, uh, we want to bring you along on that journey and kind of sort of journal the experience and the issues and the, and the decisions that we're having to make along, kind of along this path. Hopefully you'll be able to benefit from that as well. What I want to talk today about is, uh, this is the God Bold Unlimited podcast. I want to talk about unlimited confidence. I, uh, there's, it, there has been untold businesses, untold inventions, untold ideas that have never come to light, that have never benefited the human race or society simply because the person that came up with them didn't have the gumption or the confidence to get out there and start whatever it was. What, to create the invention that they'd come up with, to start the business that they had come across. So the doubt, doubt and worry has probably sunk countless businesses. There's no, it, most likely more businesses have failed that could have been super successful because of, because of people's doubt. And if they never started them, chances are it severely stunted their growth. They had great growing opportunities. They'd already reached a certain level of success. They were afraid of taking the next step to really experience true freedom great income and really just kind of impact the marketplace because they are afraid to really make that next step. Fear and doubt keeps people from starting. It keeps you from hiring the right people. Listen, a lot of times you got to hire people before you're really ready for them, you know, before the, the revenue is necessarily there to support that new hire. You got to have the confidence that your position, that your strategy on hiring this person is going to bring in the amount of money it's going to take to pay this person plus some. That's a very tough thing for people to make. There were moves for years and years and years that I wouldn't do. I wanted the revenue before we hired the person. I wanted the revenue to pay for the person. But the thing is, is you're not going to get the revenue, you're not going to get the profits until you have that individual. So you're kind of putting the cart before the horse. The reason I held off was just because of worry, of fear, of fear of losing what we'd already built. And from an outside perspective and everything, those people that were around me would have thought I was never afraid of anything. But deep down, what was holding me back in many ways was we built something up, but it was the fear of actually losing that thing. Even though when you break down the situation, if you make one bad hire, it's not probably not the end of your business. Your, pro your business probably isn't going to fail. Think about what's the worst possible thing that can happen. But people do that, or they don't, people, many times people don't do that, and they think their entire life is gonna change simply from one mistake. And what happens is because they had that doubt, they're only gonna go half in on what they do, and they're not gonna be successful with it, and then they're gonna say, you know what, I knew I shouldn't have done this in the first place. The truth is, is they never went all the way in. There's many investments that have never been made. People could have retired early, so, you know, 40, 40, 50, 60 years old, or 40 or 50 years old, had they made these investments that they thought they should make, but they talked themselves out of two just because, just in case it doesn't work out. And then just from growing, from companies growing, or you growing as an individual, you're just afraid to make that plunge to, to do something. So. In terms of businesses, many people have a misconceived notion that owning a business is dangerous, that for going to work for another company is more secure. Um, the fact of the matter is, uh, that's not necessarily the case. If you go to work for some large company, some corporate company, and they decide they haven't hit, hit their monthly quota on profits or whatever like that, you're just a number in their system. They cut you loose and you're left to find somebody else. At least with business ownership or working for the right company, you kind of control your destiny. They also, there's a misconceived notion that larger is harder. And though larger is not necessarily harder if you're making the moves necessary to support a large business. If you try and grow a business to high, you know, really high revenues, 
but you're not hiring the people or you're not getting the infrastructure, the facilities, uh, the knowledge to really carry that out, then yes, business is going to get to grow a business large is going to be very hard. But if you grow a bit a large business correctly, then what happens is you've got really smart, enthusiastic people in all the key places in your business, and you as a business owner are left to figure out, you know, what's the next step? How are you going to continue growing this thing? You're not you're not getting lost in the day-to-day stresses. You have somebody in place to handle that. And the great thing is, is the employees that the team that you've built around you, they've got clearly defined jobs at that point, so they're happy as well. Everybody's winning. What oftentimes happens is that fear, that fear allows you not to get the facilities you need or the infrastructure you need, not to make the hires that you need, and then you're left carrying out all these really little small tasks that hit you from a million different directions, and the problem is, is you have not made the necessary steps to support a large business. You're not gonna build a great, humongous cruise ship, this massive cruise ship, you're not gonna build that and put a 50 or 40 horsepower Johnson boat motor on the back of it to propel it. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's the same type of deal. You've got to, the the engine, the people, the infrastructure to push this business along has to be there or you're not gonna be successful with it. So even today, um, I came across a post that was praising one of our competitors in our marketing business. And just for a second, just a twinge of doubt uh, kind of popped in, you know, or are they doing better than us? You know, I don't like hearing competitors get pra- necessarily getting praised. And I got nothing against this company. But, you know, we, we, we were the first people kind of in this space. And we sort of, um, you know, we've got the majority, the, the, the major share in it. And then you hear these, this praise for this other company every once in a while. And, uh, you know, I felt just a little bit of doubt. And what happened, though, within five seconds, I never let it last longer than 10 seconds. And I, I probably doubt myself. I don't know. It's on a daily occurrence. It's normally first thing in the morning. Uh, or something like that, I'll be thinking about something and you'll, a, a bit of fear or doubt will, will slip in. I'll allow myself 10 seconds to think about it. And then I've just got this thing I can do and I can't tell you how, but it just crushes it. I just say, I'll take a deep breath and I just crush it. And then I just say, you know what? We've evaluated where we're going. Things have worked out well. We've got a great company. We know we can improve. We know where we can improve. We know where we can add more value. There's things we can do this other company cannot. And we're going to expand on that or whatever, whatever we're doing. Because We've been doing this long enough and we've stayed focused enough that we know we can be successful in it. And that doubt is human nature, fear is human nature. Your, your, your body is, after a self, your brain is wired for you to fear change or fear things. That's how in the caveman years, you stayed alive. See, but there's a difference between making a risk that is going to maybe allow a little bit of, maybe cause some financial harm to you and 2,000 years ago, making a risk where you get eaten by a tiger. There's a big difference here. So our brains aren't, haven't really caught up to life in the 21st century. The other thing that occurs is people have a fear of missing out on an opportunity. There's a slightly different fear. This isn't necessarily self-doubt. What, what, what this is, is they're not 100% confident or 100% sold on what they're currently doing. They're, they're thinking that, that, that success is, the people that are successful are because they found this revolutionary or earth-shattering business to get into. And the fact of the matter is, there's very few revolutionary or earth-shattering businesses. And um, what was the saying I recently heard? Uh, it was something about, uh, you always know the trailblazers in a particular industry because they're the ones laying uh, you know, face first in the dirt and they've been, they've been stampeded over. So being the first into a market isn't necessarily the best, isn't necessarily a winning move anyway. The fact of the matter is, is you choose, if you choose something that there's at least some interest in the marketplace out there, and you know how to tell people about it, and you do a really, really good job, and you do it for a long enough period of time, I almost guarantee that you'll be successful. If you jump from business to business to business because you have this fear of missing out, I almost guarantee you that you're not going to be successful. My financial outlook, my businesses took off the moment that I decided I was going to focus on one niche, which was the junk removal industry. That's not to say that we can't eventually expand out beyond that, but we have to be ready. So within the junk removal industry, I've got the junk removal company, I've got the junk removal trucks division, and I've got the, the marketing company. 
So we're building up and we're being the best possible thing we can in that one industry. And I get opportunities that come my way left and right nonstop. And what you're gonna find is the more successful you become, the more opportunities are gonna come your way. But generally you wouldn't have reached a very uh, high level of success without the ability to say no. So for many years I was held back because one, you know, I started a shredding business. We had a paper shredding company we started. There was a flyer delivery business that was started. Um, it was these ideas would pop in my head and I was one of those people like I wanted to act immediately because all my life I've heard that you know you got to start you know don't don't you don't don't hold off don't don't wait go to get going and that's correct sometimes but there's a lot of times that's bad advice figure out what you're doing right now if you've gained some traction if you're seeing some results do it do it do it probably for at least 10 years if you can focus on one thing I think Dave Ramsey said that an individual that he guaranteed that an individual that spent five years dedicated full-time on one thing, on one business, was going to be very successful. And if they spent 10 years, they're going to be world-class. Be world-class. Take that 10 years, become extremely successful, expand out where it makes sense when the services or the businesses are symbiotic, but not a minute sooner than that. And also what's going to occur is your doubt and your fear becomes a little bit more limited because you're more used to this market. It's been proven out. You see the trends, you have the experience, to, to move forward, it's not really a gamble for you. And eventually what's going to occur is you're gonna have been success, you're gonna get to the point where you just feel like whatever you do, you'll be successful in it. Now that doesn't mean you try everything. Part of the reason you're successful in everything that you do is you've become very good at determining what it is that you're gonna focus on and what it is that you're gonna try. One thing I wanna remind everybody is you can reach success, I, I, I've become determined, you can reach success in business or in life in just about anything. If, you, if, there's a, if there's something out there, a service out there, a product out there, there's somebody making a lot of money. When I told my mom, uh, at a high, you know, I dropped out of, uh, went, right, right out of high school, I went into community college. I did a year and a half in the community, local community college. I had no interest at all in going to community college. I just did it to keep my mom happy. And when we started a business, started what became Junk Doctors, which is mainly on the side, I remember a conversation, we were going to North Carolina State Wolfpack basketball game. We were driving on the road or whatever, and mom was talking to me about prospects and I, you know, getting back into school and, and going to NC State and getting a four-year degree and all like that. And she said, you know, this, this stuff you're doing with this, uh, this tr truck removal or trash hauling on the side, you know, that's, that's great side money. It's like a side hustle. That was before even people called things side hustle. You know, it's where you can make some extra money, but you need to think about what you're going to do for a career. And... Um, She's very happy that I ignored that advice because uh, obviously I wouldn't be, if I went to, probably if I went to state and if I followed a, a, a typical career path, it wouldn't necessarily be where I am now. So there, in trash hauling, you can make a lot of money. In window washing, a lot of money can be made. Putting roofs on buildings, a lot of money can be made. Uh, building websites, a lot of money can be made. People can find success. So find out what you're interested in, what drives you, what makes you happy, and put your time, effort, and focus into that and stick with it. Don't stop after a year, two years, or even five years. Give it 10 years, give it a decade, focus on it for a decade, I about guarantee you're gonna be successful. Appreciate everybody watching. Hey, hit that subscribe button if you liked it, or give us the thumbs up if you're watching us on YouTube. Hey, we always appreciate your comments as well. If you've got a subject that you, or a question you'd like covered on this episode, we'll review it. There's a great chance we'll cover it. Why is that? Because we have to come up with content every single day to put out to everybody. This is Godbold Unlimited. I am Lee Godbold. Thanks again.